good afternoon, good evening, whatever it might be. Was it 5:27 p.m. and uh, sunsets in about half an hour. And as you can see, I'm bathed in some pretty harsh sunlight right now, so we have to wait for the sun to go down. We sort of did a bit of a recce this afternoon. We're down at um, at Eagle Hawk Neck for the night, and thought we'd try and find something to shoot for sunset. And we found this boat that someone must own and uh, they've tied it up and the tide's gone out and it just looks kind of interesting. <laughs> set up for my composition and the sun's so bright in my face I can't see the LCD screen. Um, I just recently got one of these Hoodman loops and using that I can get in and check my composition and make sure my focus is sharp which is pretty cool so that way I'm not going to be wasting time once the sun does go down because I don't think there'll be a lot of opportunity there's not any cloud in the sky so I just need to be ready to take the shot. So I've got everything set up. I've got the Fuji X-T1, ISO uh, 200 um, at F10 from memory. Yep, F, just double check that. Can't see it, it's that hard to see. That's disappeared. There you go, oh, what's F9? So F9, and uh, right now it's giving me a fast shutter speed because the sun's right in the face of it. But that'll change when it goes down. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll stick some filters on, I'll probably put a soft grad on. Uh, probably no need for a long exposure because the water is hardly moving. So I think it's just a nice soft grad, maybe two soft grads just to darken the sky down. And we should be able to get a nice shot. Alright, so I've got the drone out there just hovering. In fact, I'll stop that from filming for a second. And the sun's decided to dip down. So I just stuck a 0.9 grad on, which is three stops of light, graduated filter. And I'm just grabbing a couple of shots quickly. Uh, don't have much time. And this is, <laughs> and the boss just said I'm not great at multitasking, so I'm doing my best here. I'm um, F9, it's picking 125th of a second in aperture priority, and uh, just doing my best to try and grab this shot, uh, because that sun's going to disappear real quickly. Alright, we'll do a bit more drone flying now. <laughs> They're still multitasking, drones up there just hovering, you might be able to hear it. Um, but I want to stick another filter on because I'm, I can see the foreground's still quite silhouetted. And I want to be able to make sure I put, can pull all the detail out of the boat. So by just darkening that sky a bit more, I can then get, make sure I can pull the detail out. And at the same time, have a look at that, eh? Getting some nice aerial footage from the drone at the same time as the sun's going down. Nice, and it's just beautiful calm water. We're getting nice reflections from the boat. Really nice colour. All right, so still multitasking, getting drone footage and getting uh, pictures at the same time. 
But we've got that nice glow of sunset on the horizon now, just popping up past the mountains. But at the same time, I want to make sure I get some nice, really nice cinematic sort of footage with the drone. So if you watch, I push that stick forward and the drone moves forward and you get a really nice cinematic footage. Off she goes, there we go. This is the first time I've done drone footage and photography at the same time, <laughs> and it's hard. <laughs> I'm not a very good multitasker, am I, boss? No. <laughs> All right, packed up the drone. Oh, about to. And we've got this, um, now we're entering the blue hour. So, funnily enough, um, sunset was six minutes ago. So, we've still got a bit of sunset happening. And we're now entering that blue hour where for the next hour or so we'll get that real nice soft light and we'll try and maximize some of that over the next half an hour or so as the sun drops more we'll see how we go. Um, our shutter speed will get longer. We've got dinner at 7. Yeah, as long as we're out of here by 6.30. Okay. All the boss worries about is having dinner, not grabbing photos for you guys. That's what this is all about, isn't it? Getting you photos, not worrying about our dinner. All right, so I'm going to pack the drone up and I'll just snap a couple of shots up whilst I'm doing it. Uh, it's still 1 30th of a second, really um, short shutter speed. And I've still got my two graduated filters, and I'll just quickly show you those so you can see what they look like. Um, so that's a 0.9. Maybe let's face it up to the sun so you can sort of see. So you can see half of it's sort of darker. So by putting that over the sky, if I bring that in, that's sort of what you do on the camera. And what it does. What it does by darkening the sky, and this one here is a bit lighter, and then when we put the two together, then we get, you know, sort of this real darkening of the sky. Um, and the reason we do that is then we can equally expose the sky with the foreground, especially when you're in sort of a, I don't know, this is what says a cove or something, and it's really quite dark in here compared to the sky. And you know, if your camera doesn't have a huge amount of dynamic range, this is a great way to get around it. Also find that if you use filters when you take the shot, when you start to pull the shadows out of, in Photoshop or Lightroom, you get a better result. So that's why I use these. A lot of people ask me why I use these instead of doing it post-production. And I, to be honest, I haven't been using them for a long time because I've been using the Nikon and I didn't have a set for it. But I've really enjoyed bringing the Fuji along this trip and using these on the Fuji. All right, so just packing the graduated filters away for a second. Uh, so I'm going to get this one out here. This is a 10 stop Lee Big Stopper and I'm going to try some long exposure. Whilst there's still a bit of light around, what's, um, what's really cool is the, the colour from the sunset now is in the water. And what I want to do is I want to try and uh, I'll still use a soft grade as well because what I want to do is I want to capture that colour. But I just need to get the, the sky to settle down just a little bit, just like that. And then I'll need to go to a manual exposure. What I do to sort of check um, where it's at at f4 right now, it's telling me 10 seconds. So if you think about it like this, if I halve the amount of light, I've got to double the shutter speed. That's how it works. So at f4, if I go to f8, I need 20 seconds. If I then go to f16, I need 30 seconds. So what that tells me is I should be able to go to f9. And give it a 30 second exposure and I should get some pretty good colour. But every time you double the aperture, sorry, you halve the, yeah, you, you double the number, you're halving the amount of light comes in, you've got to double your shutter speed or double your ISO. So you've got to get more light in the lens somehow. So 30 seconds was pretty good, but I reckon, uh, I reckon I can go to bulb. So I'll switch it into manual mode, bulb, and I'm going to do, start my timer. I'm going to do, oh, not an hour. <laughs> I want one minute, there we go. And I'll stop 10 seconds short of the timer because I know that I was late. Keep forgetting it's got a timer on it. <laughs> Thank you, Fuji, you've got timers on your cameras, not like Nikon, so don't need this timer. Looks good, looks real good, I'm happy. That was a minute and a half, 90 seconds, F9. And it's really smoothed out all the water. My bloody jacket's broken. Maybe I'm too fat for my jacket. <laughs> is that what it is? Could be. Oh. I'm not gonna say. All right, I'm gonna, whilst I'm trying to get my jacket fixed, I'm gonna do a, 
I'm going to do two minutes now because the light's starting to dip and I really like the long exposure. So that's two minutes. It's a bit like baking a cake, I think. You know how you let it go for a while, you've got to wait, and then you can taste it. Oh. Yeah, it's looking good as well. I could go longer. Because the light's dipping as I'm doing this, I could just keep going longer and longer and longer and longer. And I'm going to get different colours. So I am going to try... I'm going to zoom out. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to zoom out. This is a bit of a behind the scenes, what do they say, pulling back the curtains. A little trick. I'm going to zoom right out. I'm going to stay, I'm going to go F9. I'm going to zoom out quite a fair way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it into a pano. So I'm going to do three minutes. We'll see what happens. Five seconds to go and we've got our three minute exposure. And my idea with this one is to cut it into a pano. So let's see how that looks. And then, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ditch this long exposure stuff. Let's get rid of that. Just to see if I can get this, because the boss is getting cold and the boss wants to go have dinner. Is that alright boss? Yes. We'll do one more. We're going to do a HDR just to really make sure we capture it. So let's get rid of this. That's right. You know what they'll all say in this boss? What? Geez, the boss is patient. Oh. Well, they. <laughs> and that's because you are. Oh, of course I am. I'm amazing. <laughs> just ask me. Even the boss says so. All right. So HDR, if you don't know, high dynamic range, three exposures. Make sure your manual focus, once you focus, so the focus doesn't change. We are going to go minus two. Done. We're going to go zero. Done. And then we're going to go plus two, and this one will take a little bit of time. But this is the one that gets all the sh shadow detail. So this will probably take about five seconds. There we go. And then we just check them on the preview to make sure we've got them. So you see that flashing on our plus one, that's all the blown highlights but we're not going to use those in the final image. Then we've got our zero, which is quite nice. And then we've got our minus two, which really gets the colors on the horizon beautifully. That's pretty much it. Time to pack up, I think. The boss is hungry. The sunset's just about over. You could probably stay here a fair bit and continue shooting because you're going to get the stars where we are, but we definitely need to get back and have some dinner. We've booked for seven and it's 6.22, so we're about 10 minutes away from our hotel. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and look out for more. Thanks for watching.